good morning everybody welcome to another beans bag tutorial um i'm very happy that sammy from shabella designs has given me permission to do a tutorial on the violetta bag this uh came out in the alpha pack the shabella alpha pack um for the spring and it'll go live again i believe you'll be able to buy it um at the end of july so I've been wanting to make this bag for myself uh, for a while, so I thought I'd do it as a tutorial as well. So the only difference I'm doing with this bag is they have two options for this front pocket. Um, you can have it kind of paneled like this with um, an accent piece in the middle, but I'm just gonna do one piece that's one color. I'm also not doing this, my bag in vinyl. I'm doing it in this lovely cork that I got from MLI Bags. I just, love this cork and I've been wanting to work with it. Um, I've only worked with cork one other time, so this should be um, <laughs> a fun experience for me, but I think it's gonna turn out lovely. This bag is for myself, so I'm very, very excited about it. Um, a good thing about it is it takes minimal hardware. I am using rainbow hardware with it, and I'll show you. And this is my fabric that I'm using for the accent piece and the lining, so. It's, it's going to be so pretty. Is I am using um, rainbow hardware uh, from Emmeline Bags. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have any rainbow purse feet uh, in my hardware stash, so I am just gonna use antique brass purse feet because I think it kind of matches the, the um, natural color of the cork. So that's the only thing that's not gonna 100% match the bag, but it's on the bottom, so it doesn't matter. I am sewing this with my Titan TN1541S. It's very similar to the Juki 1541S. I've heard that they, I don't know for sure, but I've heard that they are um, made in the same uh, factory. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm using. This bag is more like a, a domestic machine would be just fine to make this on as well. Just be careful not to choose too thick of a vinyl or a, um, or a leather and it should be fine. Cork is a lot more pliable and um, would probably be lovely in a domestic machine as well. Um, I'm using a size 19 needle. I'm using Tech 70, I can never remember what it's called, polyester bonded thread. I have a thread zapper because this thread does fray, so any um, thread ends that won't be in the seam allowance, I am thread zapping. Uh, what? Oh, interfacing, I'm using by any soft and stable foam and i'm using for my woven interfusing called fashion fuse i get that from cleanersupply.ca you can use woven fuse you can use sf 101 you could use woven fuse 2 you can use whatever you like if you don't want the loftiness of the foam you could also use decafil light i heard that's really nice um i have used it but i prefer to use it in wallets i like my bags to be a little bit lofty so yeah, that's, um, I think that's all the information we need on this bag. I'm very, very excited to be making this. I believe it'll be the, the first tutorial on YouTube for the Violetta bag. And I just want to thank again, thank you once again, Sammy, for um, letting me do this tutorial. I'm very excited for it. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, as most of you know, who follow my other tutorials, I like to start with the straps and strap connectors that are usually at the end of the pattern, but I like to just get them out of the way. So we're going to do that today as well. So we're starting with the straps. Now I cut these to 21 inches. The pattern calls for 27. The reason I did 21 inches was because I did not have enough cork. So I actually prefer a short handle. I don't wear my purses on my shoulder. I like to carry them in my hand. So this works well for me. So yeah, I've got a yard of, of the cork and it was just barely enough, but I wouldn't have had enough for a longer handle or a crossbody or anything with this. Okay, so I'll do one handle with you guys. So what I've done, you can't see it here, is I've drawn a, a dashed line down the middle of this and I've put double-sided tape down. You'll see it when I take the tape off. like that and then what you do is you fold each end of the long ends into the center line and fold it down now if you don't have tape or if you're using a domestic machine and your 
machine just won't handle the tape, definitely use clips. If you're using vinyl and cork, do not use pins, use the clips. But my machine is an industrial, so it can handle this. So if we folded the one side in, I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna fold the other side in, leaving about maybe a 16th of an inch. Whoops, where's my camera going? Uh, you can't really see with this. A 16th of an inch um, gap in between where they join. That just helps with the turning it in. Oh my goodness, this cork folds so nicely. Let me know what you think of this angle. I've changed the angle of the camera, hoping that you see more of my workspace here and as well as seeing what I'm sewing. So hopefully it is better. I'm slowly getting the hang of it. Okay, so that's what we have. We have, oh, it's shiny. Um, we have folded it in half and then what we're gonna do is fold it in half again onto itself. And, but as we go, you're gonna clip those sides together. Yeah, I'm super curious to see how this cork holds up. Oh my, we have big time thunder and lightning happening here, so hopefully I don't lose power. If you hear big booms, we are in for a huge storm today, so. So my machine is all oiled and threaded. I've checked my tension because it sometimes changes from uh, thread to thread. My preference on my machine, uh, top stitching, I like to use a three and a half to a four, and sewing, I like to use a two and a half to a three on this machine. So yeah, just whenever I say top stitching or sewing, just use whatever your preference is. So this is what we have, we have clipped it, and what we're gonna do is the side that's folded in, we're gonna do an eighth of an inch stitch, top stitch along the top, and then turn it and do an eighth of an inch top stitch along the other side. Oops, make sure my thread's going the right way. Okay. Check my stitches and they look good. So there's one side done. If you can see it, I'm using green thread on this. Oh, I can't figure out where my camera is. Now I'm gonna go down the folded side and do the same thing. chatting with me. I'm not sure if you can see that, but the stitching is its kind of hard with the, the flashing of the uh, sparkly vinyl. So what you're going to do is you're going to go and do that with your second handle as well. I'm going to do that part off camera, but before I do that, I am also at the same time there's this big long 20 inch piece. Uh, this is for our strap connectors. Uh, we do this very similar to how um, we do our straps. We're just only doing two of the three steps. So again, I've drawn a line down the middle to mark the center, put my double sided tape on and I'm gonna fold all the ends into the center. So 
this double-sided tape is just crafting tape that I got on Amazon. I've got a pack that has all sorts of different sizes. What I'm using on this is the three-quarter inch. There we go. So the only difference is we're just folding it in that way. We're not going to fold it in upon itself because this raw edge, the raw edges on the side are going to be folded over and you're not even going to be able to see them. So then we, this gives us now a one inch piece and you're going to do a one eighth of an inch seam allowance down each side. And then you're going to cut this into four five inch pieces and that's going to give us the four strap connectors we need. I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and then I'll be back and show you what's next. So I finished the two straps. The, I just wanted to show you what I did. These are the connectors. These are the ones we just folded into the middle and then cut into four five inch pieces. It's just rather than doing them all separate, we can do them all once and get them cut out. We will be re revisiting these later. Right now, what we're gonna do is we're going to prepare uh, our zipper. I use zipper by the yard. Uh, this zipper by the yard, usually I have M-line bags, but this one's actually from Blue Cala Patterns in Toronto because I love the rainbow zipper and it's more for these rainbow zipper pulls. They're awesome, it's Blue Cala, awesome. So I put my pull on there, but because I'm using zipper by the yard, we don't have a stop on here. So in the pattern, it calls for making uh, either a, a fabric uh, zipper tab or a vinyl zipper tab or cork or leather or whatever you're using. I prefer to use uh, these metal zipper tabs from Emmeline bags. I put them on all my bags where I need them. Unfortunately, I didn't have any rainbow left, but again, this isn't really going to be seen because it'll be hiding inside the bag. But I chose the antique brass that I had in stock just because I think it matches the cork, natural of the cork somewhat, and then I guess it'll match the purse feet. So that's why I'm not using rainbow. Anyways, I want to show you how to install these. I know I've shown in some past videos, but in case you haven't seen them, I'll show you how amazing these are. So what you want to do is you want to take the end that you're going to have your zipper tape on, and you're going to fold each side in half to the zipper tape. And then you're going to fold it over onto the back of the zipper tape like that. And again, on the other side. So what you end up having is, see if I can show you. So you're just going to see the zipper teeth like that. So once you get that, I just put a clip on to hold it in place. Let's see if you can see it better. Whoops. Just like that. And then you have your, this comes with a little screw that's going to go in this back hole here. Um, I like to put this thread locker blue onto all my little screws for hardware just because it gives it a little bit more staying power. So I don't want it to be coming apart while the bag is in use or the screw to come out. So just put a little dollop of that on there. And then I take my zipper tab and just, uh, you can't really, oops, can't really see the label anymore, but this is just Beacon Frapper Tack. Um, and I just put a little bit of this on the inside of this. So just a little, little itty bitty bit. Again, just to make it hold a little more. And then what we do is we take that part we folded under and we just stick this inside as far as it will go. Oops, I got it folding over there. Where's my scissors? Okay. Let's try that again. It's a little awkward sometimes to get in. Okay, there. Now it's going in nice and easy. So you want to push it in as far as it'll go. Like that. Sometimes the glue pops through that hole. Just kind of wipe it away. And then take your... This is just a little dollar store thing. It's magnetic on the end, which is nice for picking up the screws. And then you just take the screw in the hole and screw it in until it's flush.
like that and like that so yeah that's how i do my zipper ends um i can never make my zipper ends look nice and neat when i do it with fabric or vinyl but it's sometimes it looks really nice to have them done that way as well this is just my quick way of doing it so now what we want to do is we want to have the zipper open on one side because now what we're going to do so you know which side you want to open so this is going to be opening from left to right and it's the rounded part of the zipper that you want to be on the left hand side so we're going to take this and we're going to take each side and kind of fold it in on itself at a 45 degree ish angle like that and then we're just going to do a tack stitch right there on each side you can glue it you can pin it i just kind of hold it in place and do it something that looks like that and those stitches aren't going to be seen because they're going to be within the seam allowance so now you want to do that on the other side but you want them to kind of match up so what I do is I do the zipper up close to that I kind of push the teeth together and I make it bend at almost the exact same point you could measure in however down and do it that way I'm just honestly too lazy and I prefer to do it this way <laughs> Like that and then sew it into place or tack it into place and there we go so then we will come back and I will show you what we're going to do next okay so I went ahead we have our zippers at that 45 degree angle there I went ahead and I did the first part of the zipper panel and I'm going to show you how we did this so there's the lining side there's the regular side so now we're going to do this other side here so in the pattern it tells you to glue down or take down uh, three quarters of an inch fold in three quarters of an inch from each side of the zipper panels uh, you can mark a line and either press it if you're not using vinyl or you could use a glue stick to help hold it in place this works well or if you're like me I have three quarter inch double-sided tape so I am going to use that as my marker otherwise you draw a line and you fold it on the line I'm just going to use the end of my tape to decide what that three quarter inches and fold it in nice and even That, and then again with the cork piece or the vinyl piece and what this does is it just hides all the raw edges as you can see there there's no raw edges along there okay now it's important to make sure that these are about the same length so they are, and they should be the same length as this, and they are. Okay, so we're gonna take our, our zipper and have it face up. We wanna mark in on our lining piece, we wanna mark in 3 eighths of an inch. I'm just using my Clover Choco to do that. It just brushes away. I have the silver powder in it right now, only because there's no white left anywhere. So, oops, 3 eighths of an inch, sorry. So mark 3 eighths of an inch. In. and then where our zipper I'm actually going to do this where our zipper teeth here this is the side we want to be lined up with that so we want to put our zipper teeth we're going to start it right at that line like that 
I'm gonna put a clip there, hold that in place. And then you wanna take this edge and the raw edge of the fabric and you wanna line them up like this and clip into place all the way down. So your lining fabric is right side up and your zipper is right side up. And you want it to line up. You want them to be pretty even on the back here, lining up with the other one. It's off a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Mine seems way off. Let me do that again. <laughs> It was fine. sure it's lining up. You want the two panels to be pretty even with one another. So I'm going to put this side too. Okay, so you got that. Then you're going to take your, you could go ahead and do like an eighth of an inch basting stitch there. I'm going to just do it all at once because it saves time, hopefully. I'm just undoing my zipper because we'll have to move that zipper pull. So when we start sewing, we wanna kind of have it out of the way. So we're gonna line this up, that other panel there, and clip it. So this is our exterior piece, face down, wrong side up. And then we're just gonna clip it, matching those three edges for the zipper tape, the lining, and the exterior piece. And I'm just using the same clips and just clipping down. Actually, might use a few extra. Make sure these are somewhat even. Work seems a little slippery for some reason, so we'll just put lots of clips in. So that's what we have. So you can see the panel that I've done and this one we're going to sew are pretty flush to each other. If they're off a little bit, it's like this one might be off a little bit, but that's okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to sew along the zipper tape uh, a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm lucky because my foot, my walking foot is a quarter inch, so I don't have to mark where I'm going to do this. And clip to clip. And you want it to be somewhat straight because you don't want to have a wavy zipper. As you approach your zipper pull, make sure your needle is down and you can move that pull out of the way. Make sure your fabrics are still lined up. I'm gonna keep on going. Now 
now where we come to where that's why I leave this long the the zipper tape here we're going to trim that down but it's just so I know where it is and right over top of where we had that 45 degree angle I'm just going to do a little bit of a back stitch over that just to give it a little bit more security and create a little more of a stop there for it and then continue on to the end and back stitch Said, and I'm, I just got this one. Um, I usually use a thread zapper, but this one is a Berkeley line zapper. It's used for people making uh, tie or tying flies for fishing, for cutting fishing line. But it works really good to um, make it so these ends don't, or the thread doesn't fray. Don't burn your fabric with it. Okay, so now that we got that tied in, I'm actually just gonna trim this out of the way. Like this. We leave about a quarter inch or so, just because I, I don't know, I think it just helps secure it a little bit more. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna do up the zipper and we want to pull these wrong sides together. So you wanna pull the lining and this and line up wrong sides together all edges like this and along the bottom. I'm actually gonna take this to my iron quickly just to help soften up that seam. I'm not gonna press on the, the cork or vinyl side. I'm going to press on this side and then we'll be back and we will top stitch that. Okay, so I went and I just pressed it from this side to push the seam down. It softens it up a little bit. Use some steam. Um, I can see now, at least we don't see this, I have my Colors going the wrong way, but this is the lining. I guess it's not a big deal, but it would have been nice if I had done it the other way around, but that's okay. So I went around and I matched the two edges that we had folded under here and the raw edges here and then this side here. The pattern doesn't call for sewing this edge here. I like to baste it down because it just makes it easier for later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a base stitch about halfway along this edge Go up this edge an eighth of an inch for top stitching top stitch along the top here back down the other side and then back to the center all of it with eighth of an inch and whatever your top stitching preferred length is And you want to keep all your base stitches under an eighth of an inch because our seam allowance for this bag is only a quarter inch. So it's a smaller seam allowance. Needle down to turn the corner. Needle down to turn again. Go across the top here. Uh, you may have to move your zipper pull if your zipper tape isn't long enough. Like if you're using number three, I think I will be okay. I'll just get by it, yeah. And what this is doing is holding down that seam so it will be nice and flat. down to turn and then just continuing basting these raw edges together along here. Besides putting my lining fabric on the wrong way, <laughs> it's perfect. All right, and I will be back with what we're going to be doing next. 
Okay, so our next step is we want to prepare our lining so we'll be able to attach our zipper panel to the lining piece. So unlike my other tutorials, we are working on the lining before we're doing the exterior, but that's okay. So right now I am putting in a pocket in the instructions. It does not have instructions for the pocket. You can um, definitely put one in. I like to put one in mainly because it makes turning the bag easier for me. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So um, I know this may be basic for some people, but for those people that are just learning, um, I, I want to show you how I do my interior zipper pockets. So you're going to take one of your pocket pieces. Um, in the pattern, it calls for you to cut a nine and a half by 12 piece. I cut a nine and a half by six piece because I want two pieces. So I'm going to keep the bottom of this pocket open to um, help sew up the bottom of the bag once we turn it around. You'll see you'll see the method. It's different than what's in the pattern, but it makes it so much easier for uh, turning the bag. So take your piece, and I'm just using a friction pen on the wrong side of my pocket fabric, and I'm doing a one inch line there and a one inch line on the opposite side. And then this just helps us find the center. And then you're gonna do another line one inch from the top. Like that. Go a half inch down from that and just do it from the one inch mark to the one inch mark. And then you're gonna do another quarter inch line in between that so you're right in the middle. So that is what we have so far. And then in from this side, you are going to go in about a quarter of an inch as well. And then what we're gonna do is just draw a line from here to here to make it a V. You can also do a half inch here. It might be easier to do it a little bit bigger, but I'd like to have a wider pocket. So that's giving us the baseline for where we want um, our pocket to be. So now what we want to do is we want to take our lining main panel, put it face up. Oops, I'm just going to grab that. Actually, while I have this here, I'm actually going to mark my centers, which you should always mark your centers, I guess. So my center top, I'm just matching the lines, and I'm going to take my scissors and just do a little V-clip there within the seam allowance. You wanna make sure it's within a quarter of an inch. So about an eighth of an inch. So we will just take this and finger press it in half so we find out where that center line is down the middle, like that. And I'm guessing I'm gonna to wanna to put it about, oh, hmm. Let's go, I don't have that cut very evenly, but that's okay. Let's go two inches down. And then what I'm gonna do is take this piece we had, you're gonna fold it in half, wrong sides together. Make sure that your markings are up top. I'm not sure if you can see it. But I have my fold line here. I'm just going to put this over top of that fold line so it's at the half mark. Make sure this is sitting at two inches. Should you know what? I'm going to go higher. I'm going to go one and a half inches up. And I wish that I had cut this evener, but that's okay. And then open that up and then pin that in place. Because it's the lining, if it's not exactly center, it's not a super big deal just because it is the lining and you don't see it. You do see it, but you don't. <laughs> So if I got my centers right, they should be about the same distance apart here. So that is three and a half. And that is three and a half, so we're good to go. Okay, 
so now what we're going to do, once I clear my space off, I'm just going to take this to the machine and we're going to sew all the way around this box that we've created. I'm putting my stitch length back down to my sewing stitch length. Back stitch. Needle down to turn. Needle down to turn. Actually, I'm going to check something quickly. No, that should be okay. 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 So now what we want to do is you can use your scissors, you can use a seam ripper, um, whatever you like. I like to use my little 18 millimeter Ulfa rotary cutter and we're going to just cut as close as we can to that quarter inch line there. Not into the V's yet, just what's in between. Okay, and then I'm going to take my scissors. And I'm going to cut those V's close to the stitching without going through the stitching of the box we just made. So you're going to cut them like that. Without going through the stitching. So you end up having something that looks like that. So then what the next step is, is you wanna push this through the hole. Towards the wrong side, like this. So you end up making the opening for our zipper. So I'm gonna go and press this right now and then we'll come back and I'll show you what our next step is. All right, so I have pressed that opening nice and beautifully. So now it's time to install the zipper. So I like my zipper to open from left to right. So again, I'm using zipper by the yard. You could use a regular zipper as well. Just make sure that your stops aren't anywhere where you're gonna be sewing around them. So put this in place. You can either hold it in place, because you're gonna be putting it under here like this. You can hold it in place while you top stitch it, or you can pin it if you like. I like to use, so that I have tape in all sizes. This is my quarter inch double-sided tape. Um, again, I wouldn't use this if you're using a domestic machine, if you uh, wanted to use the tape message, or the tape method. Uh, Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape works wonderfully on uh, the domestic machine, so you can get the same effect. So I'm just gonna put this along the zipper here, along the edge. I love my double-sided tape. And I'm sorry if this is repetitive to people because I know I do zipper pockets quite often in my videos, but I think it's important to uh, have it in here so those who are new to bag making can do it. And Shambhala patterns are really good for all skill levels. They're beautiful bags, but uh, they're very well written patterns and fairly easy to follow with not too many pieces, which I do like. So expose your tape. 
teman-teman. Okay, so with your pull going the direction you want it to go, you kind of put it down and then center it as much as you can into that square and position it where you want it to go. The one thing with the tape is you can pull it up and you can reposition. It's just a little easier than pins. And then you don't have to worry about if you accidentally sew over a pin, which I have done and broken many a needle. And I also use the tape kind of as a guideline to where I want this seam to hit on the zipper. There we go. Make sure it's nice and straight. Get all the way to one side if you can. Okay. So that's what it looks like on the back. That's what it looks like on the front. So when you have that where you want it to go, you're going to do an eighth of an inch top stitch along all four sides of that zipper. Yeah, put it back to your top stitch length. Again, you can use a zipper foot for this. My foot is small enough that it seems to be okay to do it without changing it out. When you come to the corner to turn, make sure your needle's down. And then also because I'm using zipper by the yard and I don't have stops, I like to go back and forth a couple times over top of the zipper tape. Just to create an extra stop like that. Needle down to turn. When you get to your zipper pull, make sure your needle's down before you pull it out of the way. down to turn. Again, I'm going over that zipper tape a couple times to create that stop. Oops, I went too far, but that's okay. And then back to where we started with the back stitch. And because this is ending where it will be seen, that's why I am going to use my thread cutter to make sure those threads do not fray and come loose. Again, only because of the kind of thread that I'm using. It does fray. There we go. So that's what it looks like. So now you're going to flip it over so you have the wrong side up. You're going to trim your zipper tape or your zipper. Um, to be even with the pocket piece. Like that. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our other pocket piece and we're gonna put it over top of that and we're gonna pin all the edges together, these three edges, but we're gonna leave this bottom open and do a quick little trick with it, which I will show you in a sec. So pin all the way along the top Okay, and before you do the sides, what we're going to do, this is a nifty little trick that I learned on YouTube um, to get a really nice seam for uh, when we're gonna close the zipper up. So you're gonna take both pieces, you're gonna fold them up uh, half inch or whatever, and you're gonna pin it. I'm doing the middle just to hold it in place. On the other side. And then go up your sides as well. Up. Okay, so now we're going to start from one side. You're going to put the zipper pocket down. You're going to have your light lining right side up and you're going to fold your lining away from the zipper pocket because we're going to sew it closed here, but we don't want to sew the lining into that pocket. So 
So I'm going about a half inch, three eighths of an inch ish. Back stitch when you start, all the way up the side. Again, when I hit that zipper tape, you don't have to, but I always just go back and forth a couple times to secure it even better. When you get to the top, you need to turn, make sure your needle is down before you turn. Fold the lining fabric out of the way so you're exposing that pocket seam there. Go all the way across the top. When you get to the other side, needle down, turn, fold your lining aside to expose that pocket again. Go back and forth over the zipper a couple times, and then all the way down. Okay, so this is the nifty trick here. So this area where we have it open but it's folded up, now you're going to just kind of flip it up like that. Then you're going to go and press that seam with your iron. So when we go to turn the bag through this pocket, that seam is already really nice and crisp for us and we just have to top stitch it. So I'm going to go and do that. This is what our pocket looks like besides the open bottom. You open it up, pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna go and so, um, press that seam and then I will be back. Okay, now it's time to attach the zipper panel to the lining. So you need, I'm starting with the one with the, with the pocket. Um, so you need your zipper panel, you need your lining piece, and then you need the lining upper contrast or upper panel. You could, I could have done this with the rainbow as well, but this is where the zipper is going to be, and I want, and this will be seen on the outside because the zipper is going to be in between it. So I kind of want um, it to be coinciding with the exterior of the bag. So the first thing you want to do, we already did it with this piece, is we clip the center. So we want to find the zipper, upper zipper panel too. So fold it in half like this. May as well do this on both sides, and just do a small clip, like eighth of an inch. You want it to be within the seam allowance. Just mark that. You could also use a pen to do this. I like to clip just because clips don't go away. So I'm gonna do it on the opposite side of this because we'll need it for the other side as well. Just a small clip. So you'll see we have the clips where our centers are. And then we're gonna do the same on the, the uh, top part, fold it in half, not the curved size, but the flat side. You're just gonna mark the center there as well. Okay, so if you're doing the zipper, I like the zipper to be at the back of my bag. So if you think about this as being open like this, that's going to be the back of the bag with your pull on the left. So you want your lining fabric right side up and your zipper panel right side up. You're going to match those center V's right there and clip them. And I gotta say working with this cork has been amazing so far I definitely recommend it if you want if you like cork it is lovely to work with okay so we have that so now we're gonna take our contrast band match up the center mark again Kind of like what we did with the zipper panels and you're just going to line up those raw edges and clip it all the way across again you could have basted this and then sewn but i'm doing it this way now these look like they're a little bit too long on mine that's only because um, i folded the i cut the cork on the fold but it ends up being a little bit bigger because the fold doesn't lie right flat, so I'm just gonna take that off later. So it's okay that it's going over, I'll trim it. As long as it's not too short. It's a little bit long on this side too.
Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew across the top of this with a quarter inch seam allowance, catching all three of those layers. Make sure you back stitch. When you get to the edge of where the zipper panel starts collecting, uh, connecting to this, just do a little back stitch right where it connects to give it a little bit more stability. I don't know if it helps, I just know that I like to do that. to where the zipper is ending, so I'm just going to do a little back stitch. Back stitch when you're done. You'll see. Okay, so I just had to double check how we're going to top stitch that down. So you want the seam to go down towards the lining. We're going to push this up out of the way and we're going to catch that seam. You see how it's pointed down into the lining and we're going to top stitch along that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So there we have it. We have the first half of the bag. This is where we'll open it to see the lining. And then we're all, this will be the top that's exposed. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach the other lining similar way. You're going to do it exactly the same. And then I'll be back to show you the next part. All right, so look, it's beautiful. There's our zipper panel. This is how it's gonna go in the bag. So that's good. So now it's just to close up the sides. So. What we want to do is we want to match up the sides. Make sure that your zipper tail, this here, is tucked inside. Because you don't want to sew it to the outside here. That would be no good. So just match up your sides. For where our um, cork or vinyl is meeting, you want to make sure you match up those seams so you get an even line. So I just like to put them together. Make sure they're matched up perfect. And put a clip there and a clip on top here. And then evenly distribute the fabric down the rest. Same with this side, you wanna match up those seams. So just where the lining fabric and the cork are meeting, put them right sides together so they're even. Paste a clip. In the bottom here. And then into the middle. We're also going to do it along the bottom, but the difference, the one thing we're going to do different on the bottom is we're only going to go, we want to leave the bottom open for turning. And that's where this pocket's going to come in later on too, I'll show you. So I like to just put a reminder because we're going to box these corners. We do have to do a little bit of sewing here. So we are going to sew from there to this point 
and same on the other side. And I like to put a little or <laughs> arrow so I don't forget. And we're going to leave this open here. So let's put a couple clips there. And we're leaving this open. We'll do that. We'll deal with those corners in a moment. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew these sides together. Now we're gonna start with a quarter inch seam allowance till about here, so three inches or so, and then we're going to branch out into a half inch seam allowance, and that's just to make it so our lining is a little more snug inside the bag. But we have to have a quarter inch at the top because we need it to be the same size as the exterior for when we sew it all together before we turn. So you're gonna start a quarter inch, and then as you come down, you're going to gradually work out into a half an inch until you hit the bottom. We're going to do a half inch along the bottom. And on the same on the other side, at the top, start at a quarter inch and then work all the way down to a half inch. Let's just start with this side first. And now I'm going to start branching out to about a half inch. We always want our lining just to be a little bit smaller than the exterior so we don't have a sagging line. The only other way to do it is to do a drop in lining and I know I'm not very good at those at all. I do not like them. Okay, so that side is done. Along the bottom again, we're just going to sew from the edge. We're going to do about a, actually, I'm going to go about a three eighths of an inch. Okay, and of course, my machine became unthreaded, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do three eighths of an inch along this bottom, leaving this open, and then go up the other side, and then we'll be back to box those corners. Okay, so we have our sides all done. You can see this is the inside here. You can see because we matched up those seams how nice they meet together there. So this bag, it does have a zipper enclosure, but it's not 100% enclosed, you can see here. But it'll still hold everything in. So I went ahead and the pattern calls for boxing the corners. It doesn't give directions how to box the corners. So I did one. And for those who've never boxed a corner before, I left one open to show you. Um, if you already know how to do this, you can fast forward through this part, but I thought it was important to show. So we have, this is what a box corner looks like, just like that. So where we have, this kind of cut out here, you want to bring your seams, you have these two seams right here, you want to open them out kind of like this. So you can bring those together. And then you line up that seam and put one to the left and one to the right. That's called nesting. I'll show what I did again. So it's like this. You're going to bring those two seam allowances together like that. Match up your seams. Put one of the seam allowances left, one of the seam allowances right, just so it's a little less bulk, and put a clip right there. And then clip all the way to the sides there. Easiest way to make a square bag, boxing corners, is so simple. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a half inch seam allowance across that. Just make sure you have nothing else tucked in with it. <laughs> Back stitch at the end. And then what else I like to do is because it's quite a bulky seam there and we want it to be able to fit, be able to tuck it closely inside the lining, I just like to trim that down to about a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch seam. Like that, that's all there is to boxing corners. So you can see, so we got the bottom of the bag open for turning. We're going to be pulling that through the zipper pocket later to seal that up, but this is the lining. And you unzip it, you have the lining. Now we're on to the external slip pocket. 
So what I've done already off camera is I went and I marked the center of my front pocket lining and the center of my front pocket accent piece. Can you see it there? It's right there. Um, another thing I did was I just drew a line with my chalk, if you can see it right there, extending that center mark down. That is so I don't have to figure out where the center is when we go to put our uh, magnetic snap on there. So the first thing we're going to do is have your lining up, your contrast piece down, line up those center points, and clip across. And again, my cork is going to be a little bit longer just because I cut it on the fold and it didn't lay flat, so I will just trim that up after. And just like that, and then we're going to stitch across that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then what we want to do is we want to push that seam down. So on this side, we're going to do a top stitch along here to tack that seam down with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So that is what we have, minus the cork being too long. I'm going to trim that up. So what I'm going to do off camera is um, it's time to put the male part of the magnetic snap onto this. That's where I put, if you can see it, extended that center line with my chalk there. Because we're going to put the magnetic snap, it's going to be part up here and part down here. We want it to be centered on the lining fabric and on this fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just follow your manufacturer's instructions on how to uh, install a magnetic snap. My past tutorials do show how to do it, but I am not going to show it this time. So just follow your instructions and then we'll come back once that's all done. Okay, so there we go. I've put, see how the magnetic snap goes kind of in between the, um, the two panels there. So that's all done. I also, as I've said in past videos, I always put a piece of duct tape or Gorilla Tape over top of the hardware just so it doesn't poke through the lining. So this is our front pocket panel. I went ahead and I put my nameplate on it as well, where I'd want it to be. So now to finish this pocket, what we want to do is we want to put them right sides together and pin along the top or clip along the top. Make sure there's no puckers or anything when you do this. Make sure it's all nice and flat and flush. Please ignore my dogs in the background. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do is, <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to stitch along just the top with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Take it nice and slow so you get a really nice, it's got a very gradual curve here, but you want it to be really nice and not square and jaggedy. So take your time to get a nice shape.
snip your turns. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn it around. And because I got cork, I'm going to push out those seams nicely. And I'm actually going to use clips to hold it. So we're going to be top stitching this. So yeah, just kind of massage it with your fingers. If you've used all cotton, feel free to take this to your um, iron to press it. through good start from the side so you can see there we've got a really nice curve along the top and then that's the back. So now I'm going to take an eighth of an inch seam allowance and I'm going to top stitch all along that top. Again, taking it nice and slow to get that nice shape. This is the top stitching will show. Especially if you're doing what I'm doing and I have a contrasting thread because my bag is all colors and I'm using all of green thread. And it doesn't say so in the instructions, but I think I'm going to go and just baste. I'm going to pin these and baste all the way around just so all of our layers are staying together and flat. And then we don't accidentally miss them later on. And you don't have to do this. I just like to do it because there's nothing worse than say this were to fold in or something when you're um, sewing on the sides. So... I like to be safe. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Oops. So I'm going to go around that outside and I am going to base this with an eighth of an inch. Again, staying in the quarter inch because you don't want it to show once we've sewn it in. So stay under what our seam allowance is. And it was optional for this front pocket panel. You could have, there's uh, pieces where you can have a contrasting middle. I didn't do that. And it was optional to baste the outside part to foam, which I did do because I like a lofty bag. those pieces together.
Okay, so I went ahead and actually did the back panel to show what we're going to be doing. Um, I did do this a little bit different than the pattern, mainly because my machine can handle uh, going through this many layers of fabric and what have you. So what it calls for is putting the the straps down and then folding it under and, and then sewing it in. Um, I didn't do that. I'll show you what I did uh, just because I knew I could get through it. So this is the back panel. So we've got our two strap connectors on there. I already put my rivets in there. Um, yeah, so we'll do the front panel. The only reason I did the back panel was because of how shiny the fabric is. It was kind. It's kind of hard for you to see what I'm doing. So the front panel has the rainbow fabric, the cotton fabric, so it's a little easier to see. So we will go ahead and do that. Put this one aside. Okay. So this is where I'm, the difference is. So you have to take your pocket lining piece and put it along it. And then in the pattern, it calls for you to just sew this and baste it down. And then once it's all turned around, you just put this under and fold it under about a half an inch. And so on the other side with the rectangular ring, I'm not doing that. I have gone ahead and prepared one of them. Um, so I'm just folding my, my connectors in half and putting the rectangular ring in them. And then I'm going to sew that whole bottom seam in. So I'm using my double-sided tape again because I love it. <laughs> and folding this in half upon itself so it hides all those raw edges nice and even like that. And then what I do is I'm taking, make sure this is going, the colors are going the right way and they are, okay. So I cut, this is where the connector is supposed to go. So I just cut down the lines and fold it down. And then I put my connector with the hardware facing down in that square, and then I clip it. You can mark it with a pen if you prefer, but this is just easier for me. And then again, you have to fold because it's on the fold. So you have to flip this one upside down and see where it's going to be. Take the other connector, the raw edges together, clip it and pull it away. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to base these to this front. This is the lower exterior main panel, the front one, which also ends up being the lining for our front slip pocket. I like to backstitch even when I'm basting these just because they are connectors and they need all the help they can get to stay in place. Okay, so we have those pointing down. Then we're gonna take the exterior top panel and we're gonna put them right sides together, sandwiching the connectors that we just basted into place. Line up the edges and clip them. like that and then we're going to sew along that top make sure your hardware is out of the way you don't want to run over it with your needle and we're going to sew along the top with a quarter inch seam allowance now when i get to the connectors i like to just do a quick back stitch where they start and where they stop again just to give it a little more security So that is what we've got there. So now we want this seam to point down because that's gonna make our connectors, because our connectors hanging out, if we baste our seam down, our connectors are going to point up. So 
what we're going to do now is we're going to we have our seam pointing pointing towards the bottom and we're going to do a eighth of an inch seam allowance i am going to go back and forth at the beginning and end of the connectors again and top stitch that come to the connectors just do a quick back stitch where they start and stop make sure your seam is facing down So I'm just going to even that up like that. So there we have that and we have that seam going down. So now to secure these in place even more, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch in the ditch along the bottom here, go up this side, get as close to the hardware as I can, go across, go down, and then back stitch. So I'm going to do that for both. Both connect us. Oops, I went and I overshot it a little bit, so let's go backwards. Turn and just follow the the stitching that we had from when we made the connectors, just go right over top of that. And I know when my my uh, walking foot just touches the bar, I know that's as far I'm going to be able to go. So I turn it and then I go across and then I turn again. I lost my little piece of... So because my walking foot tends to eat material and the hardware, I always make sure I just put a scrap piece underneath the walking foot. I can come up a little more. Just to protect it. So I'm going to just put that under there. And it's just so the walking foot doesn't scratch, scratch it up. And keep going. Back stitch. So you can see on the back, we've got it all connected there. It's not floppy like this one anymore. I'm going to go ahead off camera and I'm going to do the same with this other side. And then I'm going to put two rivets in each of them for stability. Okay, so I got my rivets in. Um, one thing I did go ahead and do is installed the female half of the um, magnetic snap. It's done exactly the same way as it was on the back of the pocket lining. So, and that is done. I didn't think I needed to show that on camera. But, so that is there. So the next step now is taking your main exterior panel and you're gonna take your external exterior pocket piece snap it together and then we're going to pin all around the sides and then baste it together now because I've done so many layers of foam you don't need to do foam for the pocket at all I did it because I know my machine can handle it and I like the the loftiness of the bag that way, but if your machine doesn't like that, those many, that many layers, uh, feel free to not uh, put the foam in this pocket piece here. Just line up all of your raw edges. Now, one thing I would do differently when I do this next time is because I folded down the straps, 
I can't see my rivets. The straps would have been up probably about another half inch if I had done it the way the pattern said. So I would actually, if I do it my way, make these strap connectors maybe five and a half to six inches long rather than five, but it'll still be good. I'm going to baste that pocket to the back. Just with an eighth of an inch seam allowance because we want to stay within our seam allowance of a quarter inch for, and these stitches won't show. trim it a little bit here because it's just a little bit wider than what I want it to be. So there we go. We got our front pocket done There's with the snap. Here's the inside of the pocket. It's got the accent piece there. So that is the front and the back panel done. So the next step now is to attach the bottom. So take one of your panels, your exterior panels, put them up, take your bottom piece, I was going to put purse feet on this and I was going to use the antique brass, but I wanted it to match everything and I don't have the rainbow purse feet. So I did not put purse feet in it this time. It's completely optional in the pattern. It isn't shown in the pattern, but um, you just put the purse feet where you want them to go. And if you need to know how to do purse feet, um, fast forward through one of my other tutorials. There's step by step of how to put the purse feet in or how I do it. So this bag is not going to have purse feet. Uh, one thing I did add in there is in between the foam and my cork, I did add a piece of Peltex, a just fusible Peltex, just to give it a little bit more uh, stability on the bottom. Um, and I just fused it to the cork. So right sides together. We are going to connect them. My piece might be too big. It's okay. Okay, and then we are going to sew that to that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Just double check if that's right. I like. We're going to do that with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. It's a little bit thicker. us to fold the seam allowance towards the bottom of the bag so it's going to go this way like this so the seam allowance will be pointing towards the bottom of the bag see my seams are very thick because I have so much foam and so much everything you can press this so it stays one way I'm just going to use my hands and fold it towards the bottom I'm actually going to go and trim this up because it's too long I 
I've got my bottom piece just a little bit too long when I had done my cutting. So I just trimmed it up. Okay, so make sure the seam allowance is pointing towards the bottom, so this way, and fold it up on upon itself. Actually, I'm going to do it this way. Make sure I don't unthread my machine again. Okay, so now it's pointing this way. So you want to tack that down. I got a lot of layers in mine here. So it looks like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the back piece of the bag and put it right side down on top of that. And then we're going to do a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So when we open it and then top stitch again, and then we're going to have it open up like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and then I'll be back. All right, so I got the bottom sewn onto the front and back panel. So you should have something that looks like this. So now you're going to put this aside just for a few moments as we prepare the side pieces. So our next step is to make our side pieces look like this. So I put in some darts here and I'll show you how I did that. I just did this one ahead of time to show you what we are going to do. So this is what our side piece looks like and what we're going to do is where these cutouts are is we're going to fold them right sides together and line up those edges. So like this. It's kind of like boxing a corner in a way. And then just put a clip on it. And then do the same with the other side. And put a clip on it. So now we got something that looks like this. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to do a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance just across that opening. one and then do the other side sorry for my squeaky knee thing I keep forgetting to oil it my knee lift from the needle okay so now we want to turn those right side out. So you just have to push them like this and then just pop out that seam with your fingers, massage it out, give it a little bend so it looks nice and neat that way. So we've got two side panels that look like that. Okay, so now the next step is to grab your ruler and a pen and we want to find the center point right in between here so I'm just going to measure from seam to seam and it is one two three four and a half so two and a quarter is my center mark right there two and a quarter two and a quarter and do the same on this side. Okay. And then on our, where our bottom piece was here, we want to find the center of that as well. I'm just going to go seam to, no, how do I want to do it? 
So one, two, 2.75. And about there? Nope. One and a quarter. Somewhere in the middle of that. So you almost want to go one and three eighths. Close enough. We're going to eyeball it anyways. Just double check. Our center points on the bottom and the side pieces either with pen or notches. Using clips or pins, add one side piece to the bottom matching the points. Then distribute it, distribute it all the way up. Okay. So we're going to do it right sides together. We're going to take this piece and we're gonna mark, match up those center marks of the bottom of the side panel and the bottom of the bottom panel, the middle. And this is slightly rounded. I do not like doing rounded corners, I will admit. And then you're going to match it all the way up the side like this. So I'm going to clip the top piece here. And then we want to distribute the fabric through. If you can open that seam where the dart is, that would probably be beneficial. So it's not so thick when you're sewing through. So I'm going to put a clip there just to open that seam up. And then just evenly distribute all the way up, making sure there's no puckers or anything like that. And then the other side here. And I'm going to open up that dart, the seam allowance there, just so it's distributed a little bit more evenly for when we're sewing over that. Otherwise, that's going to be a thick seam. first. Seam left. Where's our seam allowance for this? And we're doing a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance it looks like. So I like to do this with my main panel facing down and because I don't have any marks on on my uh, needle plate here for seam allowance guides I use uh, just washi tape from Michaels or any craft store and I measure out my seam allowances to give myself a guide so we're doing three eighths of an inch here and here we go just go clip to clip nice and so slow Make sure you put your needle down, like 
I'm going to do right now. Go slow over the rounded parts if you have to. I don't think you can really see what I'm doing here, but... One side done. So what we can do is we can kind of take a sneak peek and pop it the right side out just to see how we did. And I think we did pretty darn good. So there's the first seam there. And then that looks good. So I'm gonna go off camera and I'm gonna put on the other side. And then we will be back. We're so incredibly close to being done. So I'll be back after I sewed on that other side. Okay, we are almost done. There's the exterior of the bag. How lovely does that look? It's very colorful, that's for sure. So now it's time to insert the lining, attach the lining and the exterior of the bag. So we're going to use this drop-in method. So you want the lining and the exterior to be right sides together. So I have the lining piece inside out like this. Now you have to think about where you want things. You want all your zippers open, so make sure your zippers are open. I like my um, zipper pocket to be at the back of the bag. So I'm going to turn that this way so the zipper pocket's at the back. And then I'm going to take this bag, the exterior, and I'm going to put it inside. And then we want, we want this seam to be somewhat in the center of the curved side here. So I'm just going to try to eyeball it right about there and start clipping. I will measure it in one moment. So let's see. From there to the center, that's three. And from there to the center, would you look at that? Three. I'm pretty good. And just match the curve. Use lots of clips and clip all the way around. your zipper and your hardware are out of the way. I guess right about there. So I guess what could have made this easier is on the side panels, 
if we had just made a snip where the middle section was, it probably would have been really good. So push the zipper panel down so it doesn't get caught up in there. Just make sure that this is, my center wasn't so great on this one this time. Evenly distribute everything so you have no tucks. Again, I'm going to make sure I push the zipper pocket down. The zipper panel. See how mine is pointed up right now? You want to make sure it's pointing center down into the bag so you don't accidentally catch it when you're sewing it together. So let's go back and fix that. Flip it down. So again, see, I have it all flipped down. Make sure it's flipped down on both sides. Otherwise that could be bad news. Okay. It's almost bad news. We caught it in time. Okay, so just continue around the bag like that until you get it all in place and then we'll come back. I'll clip this off camera and then we'll come back and sew it all together. Okay, so I've got a million and one clips there holding it all together. Now we are going to sew that top shut with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I find that easiest to do from the inside of the bag like this. So that's what I'm going to do. So just start wherever and go clip to clip. Remember to put needle down if you need to adjust it all. Make sure all your hardware is pointing down too, otherwise you could run it over and break a needle. Um, for our seams, try to sew them seams open if possible. That just helps reduce the bulk. Needle down when you need to adjust. Make sure you're feeling and there's no lumps and bumps. you have a free arm on your machine that would be handy I do not have one on this one to get your curve it's just a gradual curve but try to get it really nice and even needle down to adjust
done. So now we just want to go around and make sure that we caught everything as we went on the outside as well as on the inside. And then if my thinking shears are sharp enough, you can do little notches along this curved size. I'm going to attempt to use my pinking shears, but I don't know if they're sharp enough. No, they are not. So, so these seams or this curve all sits nice and flat. I'm just going to do a couple little snips. You could do notches like this if you wanted to, not quite to the seam allowance. I'm just going to do little snips just on the curve sections. Do not go through your stitching. That would not be good. And this is just to help it get that shape a little bit better when we turn it right side out. So pinking shears would be really great, but mine are just so dull. I need a new pair. We won't go through all these layers. Okay, and then do the other side here. some new scissors too. These ones are not sharp enough. Okay, that should be good. Just along that top curved one. Okay, now what we're going to do is through this opening in the lining that we left, we're going to turn the bag right side out through that. A little bit tough at first, birthing the bag, but once you get past it, this main part, it all comes really easy. It's just getting that bottom through. This one's not too bad at all. It's one colorful bag, that's for sure. Okay, then push the lining into the bag. Push everything down where it's supposed to go. Now there's these corners here. Might want to reach in through the bottom and massage this curve out here. Make your, that's where we just did all those notches. You want to make sure that whole seam is beautiful. See, like right here, you just want to push it out with your fingers. And I'm just reaching in through the hole of the bag to do that. Okay, just lining into the bag. And so this zipper panel is supposed to be inside, so you kind of gotta. I'm gonna clip it actually. Because I can't press it, I'm gonna massage. So we're going to top stitch this. Massage these seams here to get that curve. Start clipping. Actually, let's do that zipper up. That might be handy. Oops. And we want to push that down. We are going to undo that zipper again, but just to show where it's supposed to go. So massage that seam out here to create the shape of the bag, which is that wavy shape. You can see how those notches helped because we got this really lovely, beautiful curve going on the cork here. Okay. And as you 
come along the side. Same thing. You want to make sure everything gets tucked in. Okay, let's do some more. Pull it tight so there's no... I still want this to be down. So what we're going to do is we're going to go top stitch around this and we are not going to want to catch the zipper panel at all. So we want the zipper panel to be pushed down and out of the way. If you used fabric, you can probably pin it out of the way, but I'm just going to have to be very conscious of where that zipper panel is. there I guess I could have done this off camera but you're kind of seeing what I am doing here again massage that seam roll it between your fingers to get it all out make sure it's all nice and flat underneath it and there's no lumps and bumps So that's what we got. So now I'm going to go along and I'm going to top stitch all along the top of this bag. Okay, so you kind of want to make sure you push this panel all the way. You want to make sure this is out of the way. So you're only top stitching through the one panel. Just kind of push everything out of the way. I'm actually going to start with the back of the bag from my starting spot point. Push everything down. So you are only doing the one panel. So sweet. Okay. Sure everything's out of the way slowly go ahead remember top stitching you see so you want to go nice and slow and get it perfect when you need to adjust make sure needles down before you adjust the bag Everything is flat and out of the way. Make sure that zipper panel's out of the way. It tried to keep up there. I'm hoping it didn't on the other side. Okay. Just 
Make sure everything is tucked underneath where it's supposed to be. You don't catch that zipper in there. See how it keeps wanting to pop up. Let's see how she looks. Before we seal up the bottom, it's always good to check it, zip it up. Shape her a little bit. The top stitching is looking pretty darn nice. Okay, now to seal up the bag. This way is not on the, if you're following the pattern, go ahead and you can just um, top stitch the bottom closed. The way I like to do it so you don't get that ridge of that top stitching is, I will show you. Just undo the zipper all the way. Now remember we left this opening in the zipper pocket. You're gonna pull the zipper pocket inside out like this. Okay, and then you're gonna reach inside the bag and you're gonna grab that opening that we left in the bag and you're gonna pull that inside out through the zipper pocket. Like this. And then, you're gonna take your clips, match up all those raw edges from that opening that we left. like that make sure we got it from opening to opening and then we are going to sew that with the 387 seam allowance I think we were using 
toes up the bottom. So this makes it seem like we had sewed it from the inside the whole time, which we are, just uh, it will match the rest of the inside of the bag rather than having that ridge on the inside. So I always have a zipper pocket in my bag just for that reason, because this is the way I like to close my bags up. And you can't do it if you don't have a zipper pocket on the inside. Okay, so then you're going to tuck that back into that zipper pocket. And you will see, besides that thread sticking out there, you would never know that there was a hole in the bottom of the bag. So now what we're going to do is Remember that nice seam we did when we created the pocket? So when we go to go, look, it's all nicely pressed and everything for us already. And we don't have to do anything awkward. Just give it a quick clip. Like so. And then we're gonna top stitch the pocket closed with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I don't know if I'm a fan of this new thread zapper. There we go. Stick the pocket back in. Zip it up. Like this, this goes down the side like this. Shape it with your hands. It's kind of a softer bag on the sides, but that's okay. That's what we have so far. She's a pretty. So the last step is taking your handles. Again, mine are shorter than what they should be because I didn't have enough material. So here's what it is. You're going to put them through the loops like this, turn up about an inch. You can sew that shut across if you wanted to. I usually just put a rivet right there to seal it up. So you do that with the other handle as well if it was on there. And then that's it. She is a done. That is one colorful and shiny bag. <laughs> Anyways, I hope everybody liked this tutorial. Um, if you did, please give me a like and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm trying to grow my my channel so I can do some, some live tutorials, go live on uh, YouTube. Uh, I need a thousand likes for that. I'm just under 200 right now. But yeah, if you haven't already, please like, please subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Uh, leave in the comments if there's any tutorials that you would like to see. And I will do my best to get them. Thank you everybody for, for tuning in. And I hope this tutorial was of great use to you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.